This show is brought to you by MyPassiveIncome.life. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. You might even be watching us as well. We've been doing a lot more videos lately. Well, if you've been following the markets at all, you heard about gold putting in a new all-time high. Silver up over $24 a ounce. Gold, I think the high was $1,948 and changed the ounce. And where is it going to end? Are we getting ready for a pullback? What's the trading aspect? How do you trade this market and succeed? Well, our good friend from the technicaltraders.com, Chris Vermeulen, is with us now. Chris, welcome back. So gold and silver, obviously, they finally hit the bull market that we were all waiting for. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's funny how the markets move. They move completely kind of backwards from what the masses thought in terms of Typically, we see the gold miners perform and then usually gold and then silver lags. And really, last year, we saw gold breakout indicating there was some serious fears starting to rise, uh, creep up into the market. And uh, I mean, now now it's gone ballistic. It's testing. Well, it's all time highs right now. I still see higher prices on it. Uh, I still see it running to 1967 to the $2,000 mark. I think there's a couple technical resistance levels there. 2000 is also a whole number. So I think we're going to hit that in the probably in the next week or so. Uh, that's kind of where the market I think is gunning. The momentum is gunning for gold. Uh, but I think once we hit that, we're going to see a little bit of a pause and pullback, which will be a good thing. But I mean, right now metals are on fire. They're leading the way, which is what happens at this stage of a potential bear market in equities. The last couple months of the stock market, when it's on these last legs, which it is, in my opinion. Uh, this is when miners shine, and that's uh, it's a big warning flag. There's a lot of danger, I think, around the corner for equities. So you really think that uh, we're at the tail end of this snapback uh, recovery? And we saw, you know, in March twenty uh, third, the bottom, and we've seen it recover virtually almost ninety percent of its losses yeah. in a very short period of time. Uh, you think that the world is just going to look at? The economies, what's really happening, and just go for precious metals. I think uh, there, there's so there's so many mixed signals in the market right now. I mean, the, the economics are terrible. Uh, printing uh, stimulus plans, like you know, another trillion. After this trillion, it'll probably be another two or three trillion. And I mean, everything right now is is pointing to um, when you look at the economics and the technicals, the market's making new highs on fewer stocks. And it's very sector heavy, meaning there's certain sectors doing all the work. A lot of sectors have been underperforming. Um, we're seeing the, the safe havens like defensive plays, precious metals and bonds hold up and trade to multi-year highs. All the things are kind of screaming that this market has got some serious issues. We actually have the exact same setup right now that we had in February. January, February, bonds and metals rallied and outperformed stocks for a while. And, that, and then we saw this huge news hit the market. So we've got the exact same setup forming again right now. And when things are screaming that loud and the VIX is low, the put call ratio is super low, meaning uh, we actually have the same level on the put call ratio as we had in 2016. Everyone's buying calls and there's just no fear in this market uh, in terms of the equities and option side. And I got a feeling we're gonna go into either a huge sideways range, could trade sideways for a year or two or longer, or we're going to see a, like a big bear market uh, take place. But I think most of the upside in equities are done, but we got the whole wild card of the worse, the worse things get, the better it is for the stock market in metals right now, just because if things get worse, there's going to be more stimulus. More stimulus means stocks are going to get pushed higher. Investors are going to feel like the Fed's there to support stock prices and more printing means higher metal prices. So, I mean, it, bad news right now is good news. And that's what we're seeing. It's, it's really strange. Yeah, it's a uh, mixed up, uh, shook up world, as the song said. Uh, mm -hmm. What about uh, Bitcoin? What are we looking at there? Yeah, Bitcoin, uh, 
I mean, it sold off with the crash. Everything sold off really with that March crash, but Bitcoin's recovered. It's traded sideways, a lot like what gold did and bonds did where it, it rallied up, it's traded sideways in this big pennant formation, which is like a bull flag. Uh, it's, it's pointing to much higher prices. And of course it broke out uh, today. And really the chart now is pointing to 14,000 on Bitcoin. Currently it's around 11,000. So it's had a big pop today up about 10% or so. Uh, it still has quite a bit of room to go based on the chart pattern that has formed. And I think that there people are starting to move to Bitcoin because, hey, if there's another trillion now, there's going to be another trillion later in stimulus. Uh, so people, I think, are starting to worry about this. Now that the dollar is sliding and picking up speed, they're like, where is another asset? Obviously, metals. And now people are moving, I think, to the digital currencies uh, with Bitcoin. All right. So what about the dollar slide? Yeah, looking at the dollar uh, I mean, it's probably going to continue to be under pressure for a while. Typically, what we'll see is when the stock market, if we get into a big wave of selling, panic selling globally, we tend to see the U.S. dollar rally. It's kind of the global reserve. People still flock to it when they're concerned. When they liquidate assets out of pure fear, they seem to go towards the U.S. dollar. We've always seen the dollar rally during kind of bear markets. We see it take off. So I think the same will happen. And that, to me, is going to pull... Uh, put a top in gold, silver, and miners for a few months while the market sells off and does its thing. But just like it did in 2000 and, um, 2008, we're seeing the same setup in 2008, January 2008, where stocks, metals rallied, and then the bear market started. They pulled back for a little while. And then uh, before the bear market ended in equities, we saw this, uh, the, the precious metals take off. So this time around, there's way more stimulus. I think metals and, and miners are going to hold up really well, but I think they'll be under pressure. But all it's going to be is a, a nice consolidation that lasts six, eight, 15 months, maybe, who knows, 16 months. Uh, and then I, I think they're off to the races. I mean, we're going to see probably silver, you know, somewhere going up towards that $100 mark or higher. I mean, gold is going to go ballistic. But I don't think, though, we're not at that point yet. I still think we're a year away from when it gets its real traction and starts to take off. So you're thinking it's going to be a year before silver really, really takes off? Because if we look at it, you know, gold has already uh, broken its, uh, its previous record high. Yep. Silver is still halfway to breaking its 2011 high, let alone its 2000, I mean, its... Um, what was it, uh, 1980, 1979 high of uh, that it just barely didn't make in 11. So silver's got a lot of pent up uh, energy in that uh, in that movement, doesn't it? It does. Silver, silver's, I've been talking about it for a while. Silver's got all the, you know, it's going to have the biggest percentage gain. It's not seen as the big global safe haven. It's kind of the the poor man's metal. I mean, it's always lagging. Once gold gets really pricey and people are like, I'm not paying two grand for a bar of gold. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be like, I'm going to go pay 24 bucks for a, a little bar of silver, right? So that's where it's really picking up speed right now. And it's got a lot of upside. I still think the next upside target uh, is around $44. So just under the 2011, 2012 high. And uh, right now we're trading at 2450 today, which is a Fibonacci a resistance level from the March low, which is, I think, the reason why we've paused here today. So if we can break through this 2450, uh, then it's got potential to run all the way up to 44. And at that point, if it does get there over the next few weeks, I think uh, that could be a very significant top uh, that could last a little while if 24 here isn't already kind of the first pause and pullback. Yeah, and I guess we're going to find that out shortly. Interest yep. rates, it seems to me they virtually have to go higher, but the government, all the governments of the world are hell-bent on stopping them from going higher. Yeah, I don't follow the rates too much, but I mean, obviously they're they're low and they're locked in. And I mean, really the markets, it's not really free moving anymore in, in some regards. So yeah, the interest rates, I think they're here to stay pretty low for quite a while. And it just kind of, you know, it's not good for the dollar to keep the rates really low. It's definitely going to make people want to move away and go to another currency that's paying more. Yeah, that makes total sense. And look, if you're following the bonds, then you kind of have to be following interest rates. So you're saying like government bonds have kind of become a captive market, if you will? 
I still think they're going to move. I think still think there's a big wave of supply and demand that really shuffles the price around. And um, I still think there's actually quite a bit of upside in bonds. I think they're they're primed and ready to to have another pop, maybe go to the March highs that we saw. Uh, oh, other than that, I mean, I think um, with the rates capped, there is there is a limit there uh, to really how much I think they can move. Yeah, and so effectively. We've only got a partially free market in bonds because the government, whether it's corporate or junk bonds or government bonds, the Fed just buys them up uh, without any, uh, uh, without, you know, all abandoned. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's crazy. The Fed's just sucking up all the assets and everything that's got, that's damaged. And I mean, for all we know, they're going to package them up and resell them to the, of you know, the retail users and they're going to throw in some good stuff in there and make it sound like it's got a good rating. And then America is going to be left holding the bag while the government's, the Fed walks away, you know, clean. It's how it kind of always works, yeah. right? Those are going to get rebundled up. All this debt they're buying is going to get sold to the suckers and then they're going to get screwed later. <laughs> yeah, scratch and dent, as they mm -hmm. call it. So yeah. I know you're not following crude all that much these days, but, but you do follow it some. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Nobody likes the guy who says, I told you so. The guy in 1991 who said to you, invest in the Internet. It's going to be huge. Or the guy in 1997 who said, come on, this is going to be big. They call it social media. And the guy in 2009 who said, I'm telling you, man, crypto is real. Now, I'm not going to be that guy who says, I told you so. But I am telling you that there is a 21-year-old international company where you can become a global project partner, earning a passive income doing exactly what you're doing at this moment. No selling, no recruiting clients, no administering a business after hours. Visit www.mypassiveincome.life now. That's mypassiveincome.life. Don't let history repeat itself on this one. Earn a passive income. Now listen again. That's mypassiveincome.life. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Yeah, I, I, I like crude in terms of uh, as a short play. It's been in a very strong uptrend. It continues to lose its momentum. It's filled a big gap from back in February and uh, right now it's starting to look like it is on the verge of a drop. And I think we need some economic weakness to come in in order for crude to kind of start to sell off. In a perfect world, I'm looking for crude to pop above $44 a barrel, somewhere in there, and then reverse really sharply to the downside. And I think if we see um, uh, initial jobless claims uh, start to rise, unemployment start to rise, I think people are gonna realize the economy is starting to go backwards again which we saw the initial jobless claims rise last week. And uh, I think that could start to slow things down. And that could be a, the spark of, of crude losing kind of its shine. If things are going slower, obviously crude is going to pull back uh, going forward. So I like it Very as a bear true. play, but we need to wait for uh, a bearish trade setup. All right. Well, I think you've uh, pretty much covered it all here. Anything we missed? Uh, I think that's about it. I think everybody just needs to be real cautious. I mean, the one last kind of straw for the equities market, which I follow the SP 500 closely to get a gauge of the overall broad market. And uh, back in February, we had a big gap down on the SPY ETF. And when an index has a big gap, it typically gets filled. And so we're only like two or 3% away from filling that gap. And until that gap gets filled, I think this market's going to slowly grind and chop sideways and work itself higher. But once that gap is filled, there is no real reason for the equities market to be up at these lofty levels. And we see this time and time again, almost 100% of gaps on the chart get filled. So if we're going to start a bear market, this gap has to get filled before we can start heading down for good. And so that's what I think this big dead bat, dead uh, cat bounce is really all about. It's just a complacency bounce. People thinking there was a bear market, it's over, they're chasing things. And really we're at maximum, maximum risk right now for somebody to get in to the equities market is my thinking. But again, it's still in an uptrend. Uh, the bull market is still kind of holding true here. And uh, we need to see what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks if we start a new bear market or if we break on the SP 500 to the upside and start potentially this crazy wall of worry bull market. 
All right. Well, we're going to find out uh, what's going to happen very shortly. I have a feeling, um, you know, I kind of agnostic toward the market because it's so manipulated. So much liquidity has been poured in. They're just sitting on trillions and trillions of dollars with uh, no place to go. It's really hard for institutions to invest in precious metals. They can yeah. buy miners, yes, but a lot of the miners that will go will do the best besides your Newmonts and your barracks. A lot of those miners are small cap or micro <laughs> micro or small medium size. And they to for them to pour money into it, yeah, other than in a private placement, which right now the sector is is having record uh, fundraising. They're they're yeah getting money all over every uh, decent junior out there is raising $10 million this week. You know, that's what it yeah. seems. And, <laughs> uh, and, you know, there's some great companies and they've had moves, but uh, for big money to invest in gold, they can't get the physical that'll screw things up. They can't go to silver, palladium and platinum, forget about uh, they're kind of constrained from this market. So I think the what you were saying of the silver investment demand effectively, because the commercial demand manufacturing is kind of in the dumps right now, but the the real investor demand stackers, whatever you want to call them, is yeah. starting to kick in now. Hey, one thing we didn't talk about, and I really wanted to get your take on it, uh, the reverse Robin Hood effect. So you've been trading literally your whole adult life and then some, yeah. and you see these fads come and go. And basically they're just new ways, new variations on the theme for Wall Street to separate investors or gamblers from their money. Yeah. And we're seeing Robinhood, oh, it's so good. They don't charge you any fees. You trade for free, except that you are the product. Your information is the product and they're front running it. They're selling it to Citadel. All the high frequency fraud entities are buying your data and front running you. This thing can't end well, can it? No, I, I don't think so. And I mean, the whole commission free structure is, uh, you, you don't get the best fill now. So when they give you free commissions, it's because they're kind of acting as the middleman and they get to pocket the spread. Uh, the average, I think, um, Robin hood account is something around $3,000. So it's really small, but obviously they got like, I think they got like 10 million new users or something. It's unbelievable. So they got the volume there. So they're making their money on the spread, selling the data, all that stuff. Um, really, because they're tiny accounts, people, I, you know, you don't really need to worry about the spread. I mean, if you're putting on a thousand dollar trade, who cares if you pay an extra three cents or 20 cents, right? It's irrelevant. But, I mean, they've got the volume to make millions and millions off that repeatedly daily. Uh, but yeah, they're kind of the guinea pigs are kind of, they're, they're leading everyone to kind of figure out where the markets are going. You don't want to own the cannabis stocks because all the Robin hood traders own them <laughs> and they've been going down forever. And they've been using, the product. <laughs> using go, the product, using the product liberally. <laughs> <laughs> you go look at the airline companies, which have been Ooh. beat up and they're all about to go bankrupt and potentially get bailed out, but they're still going to collapse in value. Yet all the Robin hood traders own all the, all the leading airlines. I mean, all the, all the Brooks companies rent the car. <laughs> meet up. And I think that are going to do really poorly are held somebody's holding the bag and it seems like those kind of traders seem to be holding them. I'm not saying they're wrong, but it's just on average. I mean, you don't want to be holding positions that are not performing. Like those are dead sectors. You shouldn't really be long them. You should be sh out of them or short trading short term. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we've seen this one a lot of times before and it's like I said, just a variation on the theme. There is uh, no free lunch. Free lunches are probably the most expensive commodity on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So anytime they're offering you a free lunch, you better look to see how they're charging you for it because you are going to pay through the news. It's kind of like casinos. You, know, you go into a casino and it's like, they gave me a free drink. Oh, they're giving yeah. me a free hotel room and a free meal and free this and free that. And then you find out that you lost $15,000 and the, the value of these freebies was $500 and you feel like a fool. I think that is what's going to happen 
in the Robin Hood universe. Well, Chris, uh, just tell us best place to find you, how we sign up for your service. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So uh, every morning I do a morning report on all the key markets we just talked about in detail. I show you my charts, support and resistance areas, setups that are unfolding and uh, how it's going to affect our portfolio and, and what we're looking for over the next uh, you know week or two weeks out. And you can follow that uh, at thetechnicaltraders.com. And uh, whenever we have a trade alert, we send out a trade. We trade ETFs and um, pretty straightforward. We swing trade. And we have also got an investing newsletter, which is kind of like a very passive set it and forget it. Uh, you are there long equities with the SP 500. Um, could be long precious metals or miners when they're in a bull market. Uh, and then when the market goes into a bear market, we're either in bonds or an inverse ETF. Very slow trading, you know, really is only a trade or two every year. But uh, so we do investing and swing trading and uh, pretty straightforward to follow. All right. And uh, you will see a link to this in the show notes, as always. And make sure you sign up for a newsletter, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. We're going to be running a contest, what you think the price of gold will be on August 13th, 2020, which will be exactly 49 years from the date that Nixon closed the gold window and helped create the world in which we are living in now and never lose sight of that fact. Chris, always a pleasure. And we will talk to you again real soon. Hey, thanks for having me, Carrie. Always a pleasure. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.